So there are three reasons to upgrade or update or refactor an existing code base. First is code maintenance. So let's say you need to update the dependency, right? Node.js, right? JavaScript, it's pretty standard. The second is the greenfield code. Let's say you're adding a new feature, a new functionality. You might have to write some migration on the back end or implement new API endpoints or add some UI on the front end. The third reason, which we are going to talk extensively in this video, is performance improvement, right? So um, on November 2nd, 2015, right, Mike Thompson, who is the author of Reframe, he basically added this, um, this PR, right? Uh, so you can see one, uh, let's, uh -oh. So as you can see, there's one, two, well, one file, right? So basically what he did was he replaced the go loop with an event queue and a finite state machine, right? But why was this change? made because um, two reasons one issue it had was it could not handle batch events so every event was handled as they came and this is a problem when you learn that each event took about five milliseconds to be handled so if you had like 10 events the tenth event took fifty milliseconds. So as you can see, the performance uh, performance decreases as the number of events that needed to be handled increases. Right. So this is clearly a performance bottleneck. So Mike decided to change the implementation. Okay. So now let's see the PR again. So as you can see, he removed a bunch of stuff. So the things that were removed was the core async stuff and he added um, a lot of, he added the flush and, and batching handlers and da, da 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 da. Actually, let's go to the repository. So in this video, um, I wanna give you a, so I, I wanna go over this uh, file, right? So this is the, router this is the new implementation so basically there are two things right the first is the the event queue right and event queue is um, implemented using the protocols so what protocols does is what is protocol closure protocols okay so on the website it says closure is written in terms of abstractions right there are abstraction for sequences, collections, callability, etc. In addition, Closure supplies many implementations of these abstractions. These abstractions are specified by host da 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 protocols. Okay, so a protocol is a name set of methods and their signatures defined using def protocol. So what def protocol does is it allows, think of it as um, if you are a TypeScript or a Java developer, think of, of this as an interface, right? So you are basically defining an interface. So the interface for our event queue will have all these methods. And this refers to this object, instance of an object. And the second argument is the additional argument that you can add. But as you can see, here we are defining one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine methods, right? And um, so protocol, it does not specify the actual concrete implementation, but we are just specifying the signature of the methods. Okay, so that's what protocol is, right? Now let's see how this protocol gets used in line number 86. So in line number 86, we have a, um, so def type. Let's, let's go over definition. What does def type do, right? Def type, um, right? What it does is it defines, 
タイプタイプタイプタイプタイプタイプタイプタそ、so、デフタイプ d o e s is it, it creates a new object. You, you are creating like a class. So this is, you're saying,、um, this is an event queue、um, object constructor. And here,、um, for when you are instantiating this object, it accepts two parameters, two,、um, two arguments the FSM state. So this is the, the state of the FSM and,、um, and the queue itself. So, the FSM state is the state. So,、uh, in, in, in reframe, we, it can be in this state. It can be in either in key sense state, or schedule state, or running state, or、um, pause state, or resuming state. So,、uh, five different states. And then you have this event queue. Now, what is this event queue? So, event queue is.、Um, The, the, the queue is, is a queue data structure, right? So,、um, so in our case, it's FIFO, right? First in, first out. So, first events that get s handled,、um, um, the first item that gets added to the queue gets all this gets handled first. So, it's a FIFO queue. Okay. So,、um, and let's see how this dev type is used. So, this Event queue is used in line 183. So here we are、uh, instantiating this event queue and we are passing the key, key send as the initial state of our、uh, FSM. And then we have the queue data structure, which is an empty queue. Okay. And here、um, in JavaScript,、uh, sorry, in ClojureScript, you can create a queue data structure by using this、um, hashtag queue and then passing this,、um, this two brackets. Right, so, this creates a mutable queue. This is only,、uh, this is closure script specific. So, here we are creating, so this pattern in, in OOP land is called a singleton pattern, right? So, you're create, you're declaring, you're creating a single instance of this event queue. And then this is an object, right? This is a JavaScript object. And,、um, and these are the methods, right? End queue, add event, process event. Now,、um, So, how is this used? In the, so, this is, as you can see,、um, in the dispatch function, when we, when we invoke this dispatch function, we are calling the NQ method of this event queue and we are passing the event vector. So, for example,、um, if we do comment dispatch increment, right? So, if you have a, so this is the event vector, right? Or yeah, delete item. So, what it does, it, 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 it calls this NQ method. Now, let's see what this NQ method does. So, NQ, what it does is it calls the FSM trigger, and here we are、uh, calling the this. So, this refers to this、uh, object, and then we are calling the add event and the event vector itself. Now, let's go and see what's happening in add event. Oh, sorry, in FSM trigger. So, FSM trigger is the actual、um, finite state machine implementation. So, this function is pretty、uh, standard. So, let's ignore this for now, right? So, this, okay, let's do like this. Okay. So, FSM trigger, what it does is it accepts three things, right? That this is the instance itself, and then the trigger, and then the argument. So, here, the, our first trigger is,、uh, so we have. We are looking at a first trigger. So, our first trigger is add event. So, what trigger does it? It trigger enables the transition of state in FSM. So, in this case, we are saying add event is our trigger, right? And then we are also passing the arg. And arg in this case is the event, right? Event object. And,、um, okay. And then in line number 70, 174 and 175, what we are doing is we're calling the set function on FSM state. We are saying this is going to be our new state. So the new state is going to be our new FSM state. And then we're saying if this action function exists, then call this action function. Now let's see where, how this new state and action function is derived. Now, if you look at line 140, we are,、um, 
doing a let over here and we are saying the new state and action function, right? And um, this is dependent on the FSM state and the trigger, right? So FSM state in the beginning is key sent. Cool. So um, basically this is the, um, the, 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 the code that gets run, right? So you have the, 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 the current FSM state is queue send. So the queue is idle, there's nothing in the queue. And we're saying this is the action, right? So now we want to add the event. And now we're saying the new state will be changed from key send to scheduled. Cool. And then we call this action function. So this is the action function, and which just gets called right after you set the new finite state. Cool. And if you look at this one over here, then we are doing two things, right? We are calling the add event and then we are calling run next tick. And now let's see these two events. So first let's let's see what happens. So when we're calling the add event, right? So add event, add event, add event, add event. Where is it? Okay. So what we are doing is we are setting the queue. Right? We are we are uh, updating the queue and we are uh, we are adding the the event to the queue. That's all it is doing, right? So this is we are adding the event to the queue. Okay. So first we are adding the event to the queue, and then we are calling the run next tick, which basically does um, which basically does this, right? And here we are. Um, we are calling the next tick function from Google Async. And uh, basically what this does is this is going to run on the next browser repaint. So this 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 is the reason why uh, reframe events are asynchronous, right? So this is this this line of code runs asynchronously. And then we are passing the function, right? And we are calling FSM trigger, right? This. And now our second action um our action um, that will cause is begin run. So at this point, our um, our uh, FSM state is scheduled, right? And uh, we are saying the action, the trigger, is begin run. So this line of code runs. So um, so now that we have added the event, what we want to do is we want to handle that event, right? So we want to basically see, you know what what we need to do with the with the with the event so it calls the run queue right so now our uh, new fsm state is running and our action function basically calls run queue okay so we started with the queue sent fsm state then we changed to scheduled and now it is running so now you can see how this is implemented right okay so um running and then run queue now let's see what run queue does run queue is as you can see it calls the loop right it's looping over the queue and um there's two cases um, if the um the queue is empty then we basically finish right finish run so it calls the finish run so it should be running and finish run. So it calls this one and then it, um, so we are back to square one, right? Okay, that is the first case. So this is the guard for that. And then the next is you have uh, the else block. Here what we are doing is we are, um, we're saying if, if there's a later function then we we call this otherwise um so in our case you know we don't we don't have any later functions so we don't really care about this block what we do care about is process the first event so it's calling the process first event here and then it's recurring over this value n right so um yeah so you're starting with the count of the queue so here's one and then now it becomes zero and then the next code get this line of code gets run so now let's look at the first process first event 
The process first event, basically what it does, it uh, um, so when you run the peak queue, it returns the first item, uh, the, the item, the first item in the queue, not the latest, but the, the earliest item. And then you are hand, you're calling the, um, so there's a try catch block over here. And then you also have, uh, you're also mutating the queue. So uh, you're setting the, you're, you're, when you call this pop function on the queue, it, it removes the, the first item and then it just you know, returns the, the queue with if there's any other item that exists. And we are just setting the queue. And then we are handling that event over here, right? And if there's any errors, then we are, are catching it and then we are calling the exception, right? An exception gets handled over here. Um, there are a couple of places where handle exception is handled. One is running and one is uh, resuming, right? So yeah, that's basically, okay, let's see what handle does. So if you go to handle, which is coming from handlers, right? So handle, basically what it does is it, um, it extracts the event ID and then it 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 um, it looks up uh, the uh, so this lookup handler. What it does is where is lookup handler? Lookup handler. Okay, basically what it does is it tries to get the uh, event function, and then um, what is happening here is you are passing the app DB and then the event vector, right? And that's it. That's it for handle function and that's it for the event loop. I hope you were able to understand how this event a finite state machine works. Um, and I hope I was able to um, uh, able to give you a brief uh, I hope you you know you have some understanding. If you don't um, if you if you st if you're still confused, then let me know in the comments, and I'll try to make a better version. But yeah, other than that, um, there's nothing to it. I'm going to stop the video here, and uh, I'll see you on the next video, where we will go over Reframe 0.8. And uh, 0.8 is very interesting because this is the version where they introduced deduplicated subscriptions. So we are going to get into uh, subscriptions, which is a lot of fun because we will learn about DAGs and reactive programming and, and uh, yeah, should be fun.